quiserem, por exemplo, entender como é que funciona, ver atualizações de tudo que está rolando, eu sempre recomendo esse canal aqui. Deixa eu ver aqui. Two Minutes Papers. Porque, tipo... Vamos ver se tem um vídeo pequenininho aqui que a gente pode ver. Tipo, e basicamente, assim, é sobre vários tipos de papers de, de TI, geralmente, que esse canal fala. Só que, obviamente, ultimamente, ele só tem falado de IA, porque... Vamos, vamos ver essa aqui que, que ele tem. E deixa eu ver se tem legenda e vamos ver se a gente traduz a legenda para português. Like you've never seen before. This is done with something that we call nerves. So, what are nerves? Essentially, we grab a smartphone and a set of images go in and reality comes out. When there is a gap between the images, it can synthesize all this information and it almost looks like reality. Absolute magic. Now, many of these are neural network based techniques and take quite a while to compute. However, later Nvidia published a technique. Saca só, esse canal basicamente fala só sobre isso. E agora eu tava pensando se pá, esse cara é uma, é uma voz gerada por IA também. <risos> Porque esse canal, ele usa muita coisa gerada por IA, tipo todos os thumbnails e tal. Tipo, esse thumbnail aqui é gerado com as coisas e tal. <risos> é meio creepy, né? Mas esse canal aqui é muito bom, eu recomendo vocês procurarem pra entender as coisas. Inclusive, a explica tem uma explicação boa... Uh, essa aqui, olha, essa aqui é muito boa. Vamos ver isso aqui. Play a video game together. So, in particular, what happens if we put 25 of these amazing ChatGPT AI agents, give them motivations and memory and put them in a simulated town. The answer is magic. Magic happens. What I mean by that is that interesting social behaviors emerge. They plan their days, form relationships, invite each other to parties. They love to talk and talk and talk. Hmm, I wonder what these discussions are about. Yes, of course, I am going to tell you soon. Initially, we find them asleep and then They wake up and start their morning routine. They brush their teeth, get in the shower, and dress up. Or, like good fellow scholars, they want to read papers, or, get this, to work on their own papers. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Working on his research paper at school library. That's how we know. Eles basicamente fizeram um Star do Valley com o yeah. This is a good scholar. Eu acho que essa é a voz dele de verdade, mas agora que vocês falaram. Uh, não sei se vocês já viram aqueles modelos de voz que tem no TikTok, que geralmente tem um vídeo dos cachorrinhos que é tipo assim, ai, eu, eu quero jogar bolinha, papai, sabe? Que é, que é uma voz de cachorro que é meio, ah, você falou que eu não posso comer comida. <risos> Isso é tipo, é uns modelos que transformam a tua voz numa voz engraçadinha. Mas eu acho que essa é a voz dele, tá? Early game. But all this is not surprising. The surprising part starts now. Remember, they are ChatGPT agents, so yes, they converse in full natural language. É Here is an example conversation. John asks Tom, quote, Hey, have you heard anything new about the upcoming mayoral election? Then Tom answers, No, not really. Do you know who is running? Yes, there really is an election going on in this little simulated oh, eles vão chegar no How muito cool rápido. is that? For instance, later, Isabella says to Tom, I'm still weighing my options, but I've been discussing the election with Sam Moore. What are your thoughts on him? Where Tom, a separate ChatGPT agent, says, To be honest, I don't like Sam Moore. I think he's out of touch with the community 
and doesn't have our best interests in heart. Wow! They ask each other's opinions and try to be informed citizens for the elections. Really cool! So, what is the result? The result is that the life these agents live resemble the interactions of real humans. Okay, but how much do they resemble real humans? That will be a huge surprise. I will tell you by the end of this video. What I also loved is that these agents also engage in self-reflection. They think, who am I and what is important for me? For instance, you see how one of the agents, Klaus, reflects on his observations and finds out that he is highly dedicated to doing research. Haha, <laughs> a fellow scholar at heart, I see. Like it is true for us humans too, reflection is important. Sometimes we have to look back, reflect and learn some new lessons based on our experiences. Thus, these agents can also be asked what they are the most excited about, then they check their memories and Isabella finds out that she is most excited about throwing a Valentine's Day party. And that is one of the most interesting parts of the paper because of two reasons. Question one is, how did this party come about? And question two, did the party really happen? One, the party ah, came about because one of the scientists é que specified to the character that it wants to throw a Valentine's Day party. And get this, the AI heard this as its own inner voice, very cool, and tried to act on it. But here comes question two. Does the party happen? And if so, how? Organizing this is not easy at all. Not even in a small simulated é isso mesmo, you see, lots of things have a to happen tá no... for this to take place. All tá of the aqui, characters have to know about the party and they also have to show up. But she really wants this party to happen, so she tells a resident fellow scholar, Klaus, who then <laughs> fortunately tells Abigail about it and look at that. Isabella hears back about the party from someone she didn't even invite yet. Information is flowing in this little city like it would in a real city among real humans. I love it. Quoting the paper, é, the é agent agent, autonomously spread invitations to the party over the next two days, make new acquaintances, ask each other out on dates to the party and coordinate to show up for the party together at the right time. Wow! And the answer is, yes, the party indeed happened. A good job, little AIs. And there is one more thing that I would love to show you about this paper. So here is where I fell off the chair. Look. What? Are you kidding? Or is this real? Case. Scientists at Google also asked a bunch of humans to play the game. Here they are. And then they asked a separate set of evaluators who found the AI's behavior more human-like than the humans themselves. Yes, they are more human than humans, ah. according to evaluators. Wow! Ah, of course, every não test sabe like que é this humano, has its limits and note that this is just a simple game with simple interactions, not real life. But this still keeps me up at night. Some agents accepted the party invitation and some didn't. And this decision came back to them, reflecting back on who they are, what their goals are, and what their schedule is. This very much sounds like human behavior. They have their own little lives and their own preferences. Little virtual friends. Really cool experiment. Muito legal. What a time to be alive! If you're looking for inexpensive tá. Aí, cloud agora GPU, ele tá metendo uma, uma propaganda. Tem um outro muito legal que, que eu também vou mostrar. Enfim, eu só tô mostrando videozinhos legais e que deixam vocês com ansiedade. Mas tem esse do joguinho. Tinha um outro que eles jogam joguinho. Tá, esse, esse paper aqui, nós vamos falar exatamente sobre esse paper. Eu tenho um outro vídeo pra gente assistir. Mas... Tem um outro que tinha uma simulação de joguinho Que o que era mais interessante Era como A IA ganhava o joguinho De uma maneira que a gente não esperava 
isso, isso é uma das coisas que os pesquisadores estão sempre falando que, tipo, é um dos perigos da IA. Tu, tipo, manda ela fazer uma coisa e daí ela, tipo, faz o que tu pediu, só que de uma maneira que tu não tava esperando e nem sempre isso é, é bom. Deixa eu procurar aqui game. E vamos ver se... Esse aqui, ó. Saca só. O Castanari falou disso. Eu não vi ainda. Deve tá, deve tá bom esse pode pá. É, eu... Essa simulação foi muito fofinha, né? Mas a gente já fica pensando qual vai ser a simulação que eles vão virar um Estado fundamentalista que sacrifica os cidadãos para o Deus da IA, que é os humanos que estão lá fora, para tentar escapar da simulação. E também fica pensando qual é a simulação que eles vão passar mil anos e daí vão fazer uma sociedade comunista que é muito mais avançada que a nossa. Tem todos, todas essas simulações. Nessa, eles fizeram uma festinha e tipo, yeah! Me parece, me parece que a simulação... Eu não li o paper, mas ela rodava de uma maneira lenta para tu poder ver os personagens conversando e tal. Eu acho que é isso. Não sei se você comentou, mas tem aquela empresa de atendimento a desordem alimentar que demitiu todos os funcionários após eles se sindicalizarem e substituir por chatbot. Eu não vi essa notícia. Menos de uma semana o chatbot já tinha quebrado e dado papo meio perigoso. Enfim, então, Radu, é, é basicamente isso que eu tô dizendo. Uh, é tão sedutor o prospecto de tu não ter que pagar pessoas para elas fazerem esses trabalhos e tu substituir os trabalhadores e do lucro que tu vai conseguir com isso, que o pessoal tem ido com muita pressa a questão do desenvolvimento da IA e isso está gerando esses tipos de perigos aí. Que, enfim, a saúde das pessoas é uma coisa muito séria, mas esse até foi um perigo pequeno, assim, que a gente pode imaginar coisas muito piores que têm consequências, uh, tipo, pesadas no mundo real, mas, enfim. Uh, vamos dar uma olhada nesse aqui, esse é muito Dear fellow scholars, this is two minute papers with Caro, Jona e Fahir. In this project, OpenAI built a hide-and-seek game for their AI agents to play. While we look at the exact rules here, I will note that the goal of the project was to pit two AI teams against each other and hopefully see some interesting emergent behaviors. And, boy, did they do some crazy stuff. The coolest part is that the two teams compete against each other and whenever one team discovers a new strategy, the other one has to adapt kind of like an arms race situation, and it also resembles generative adversarial networks a little. And the results are magnificent, amusing, weird. You'll see in a moment. These agents learn from previous experiences, and to the surprise of no one, for the first few million rounds, we start out with pandemonium. Everyone just running around aimlessly. Without proper strategy and semi-random movements, the seekers are favored and hence win the majority of the games. Nothing to see here. Then, over time, the hiders learned to lock out the seekers by blocking the doors yeah. off with these boxes and started winning consistently. I think the coolest part about this is that the map was deliberately designed by the OpenAI scientists in a way that the hiders can only succeed through collaboration. They cannot win alone, and hence, they are forced to learn to work together. Which they did quite well. But then, something happened. Did you notice this pointy, doorstop-shaped object? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, probably, and not only that, but about 10 million rounds later, the AI also discovered that it can be pushed near a wall and be used as a ramp, and, ta-da, got him. <laughs> the seeker started winning more again. So, the ball is now back on the court of the hiders. Can you defend this? If so, how? Well, these resourceful little critters learned that since there is a little time <laughs> at the start of the game <laughs> when the seekers are frozen, it's apparently, during this time, they cannot see them, so why not just sneak out, steal the ramp, and lock it away from them? Absolutely incredible. Look at those happy eyes as they are carrying that ramp. <risos> And you think it... O que eu gosto é que assim, uh, esse cara ele fica antropomorfizando as IAs, né? Que, enfim, é uma discussão filosófica e tal. Eu, eu tendo a fazer isso também. Mas se, se, esse, se a teoria de vocês está correta e esse canal é feito por uma IA também, uh, ele fica tipo, ah, os olhos felizes delas. <risos> é muito engraçado. It all ends here? No, no, no. Not even close. Agora, it gets weirder. Much weirder. When playing a different map, 
a seeker has noticed that it can use a ramp to climb on the top of a box and this happens. Do you think couch surfing is cool? Give me a break. This is box surfing. And the scientists were quite surprised by this move as this was one of the first cases where the seeker AI seems to have broken the game. What happens here is that the physics system ah, yeah. is coded in a way that they are ah. able to move around <laughs> by exerting force See, ah, yeah, on themselves, much speed runner. but there is no additional check whether they are on the floor or not, because who in their right mind would think about that? As a result, something that shouldn't ever happen does happen here. And we are still not done yet, this paper just keeps on giving. A few hundred million rounds later, the hiders learned to separate all the rams from the boxes. Dear fellow scholars, <laughs> this is proper box surfing defense. Then, lock down the remaining tools and build a shelter. Note how well rehearsed and executed this strategy is. There is not a second of time left until the seekers take off. I also love this cheeky move where they set up the shelter right next to the seekers and I almost feel like they are saying, yeah, see this here? It's not for the There's not a single results. thing you can do about it. In a few isolated cases, <laughs> other interesting behaviors also <laughs> emerged. <laughs> for instance, for the, the hiders <laughs> learn to exploit the physics system and just chuck the ramp away. After that, the seekers go, what? What just happened? But don't despair. And at this point, I would also recommend that you hold on to your papers because there was also a crazy case where a seeker also learned to abuse a similar physics issue and launch itself exactly <laughs> onto the top of the hiders. Man, what a paper. Keep this system down. can be extended and modded for many other tasks too, so expect to see more of these fun experiments in the future. We get to do this for a living, and we are even being paid for this. I can't believe it. In this series, my mission is to showcase beautiful works. Enfim, esse, eu acho que esse foi um dos primeiros vídeos do canal três anos atrás. Esse, então, para vocês verem, a OpenAI está fazendo pesquisa há bastante tempo. O, o que realmente assim meio que empurrou a proverbial rampa para fora da para fora da fase, né? Foi as as grandes modelos de linguagem. E então, Guilherme, tem os speedrunners assistidos por uh, bot, né? Que é os... Tu, tu assisted speedruns. Que as pessoas programam o bot pra fazer e tal. Com as IAs, e eu já tinha visto há um tempo atrás o pessoal tentando fazer isso, mas com IAs de, de aprendizado, de reforço de aprendizado, que é o, como eles chamam essas, eu já tinha visto o pessoal tentar criar o, o bot sem dizer pra ele o que fazer. Quer dizer, dizer, dizer tu diz, mas sem programar o comportamento, tu só diz. Você precisa chegar do ponto A até o ponto B da maneira mais rápida, e daí esse, uh, esse tipo de coisa começa a acontecer, e daí tu pode descobrir os bugs e tal. Uh, mas interessante, né? Uh, sim, é, o, 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 pulo, o pulo reverso do Mario, né? 